whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand in the latter days upon the earth. And though after my skin worm destroyed this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is of certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. And doth thou open thy eyes upon such an one, and bringeth me unto judgment with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou have pointed his bound, that thou that he cannot pass. Turn from him, that he may rest till he hath accomplished as in Highland his days. We thank God for the reading of a few verses from the 14th chapter of the book of Job. And now we are going to have a New Testament reading uh, from our Robert Jackson. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter, the first through the fourth verse, and the 37th through the 39th verse. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one cord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. In verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are off, afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We know you will ask everyone to stand and serve the family at this time for a word of prayer. So please stand to reverence. Accept the family. We will ask that everyone, wherever you are, to remain until after the prayer. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, O oh God, even for this 
occasion. Love God, you have called a warrior, a soldier home. Someone, oh God, that have loved you and served you for many years. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for the years that you gave us, that you gave our elder Samuel Watkins to us. We thank you, oh God, for the example that he has left and the legacy. But today, God, we ask that you look on the loved ones, the family members, oh God, that are left, oh God, behind. Lord God, we ask that you would strengthen them. We ask that you would keep them. We ask, oh God, hallelujah, that you would help them, oh God, to recognize, oh God, that he lived a life, hallelujah, so that they can be, hallelujah, brought to you. We, oh God, we pray that you would bless this service, this home going, this celebration of his life. Let it be a joyful time. Hallelujah. Ah, for he, oh God, has gone to a better place. This is what he lived for, oh God, to be. Hallelujah. Live with you again. Bless the service. Bless everything that will be said and done. Everyone that's assembled in this building, we ask that you look on them. But at the end of the service, oh God, we pray that somebody's heart, hallelujah, would be touched. We pray that something would be said, oh God, to encourage and uplift and save. In the name of Jesus, have your way we ask you. Have your way we ask you. Have your way we ask you, oh God, in our midst on today. Bless the preach word in the name of Jesus and the church. Amen. At this time, we are going to have the favorite of a selection from the, the Revelation uh, Church. Praise God. And we ask uh, the men to come forth. Praise God at this time. Praise God, you know who you are. God bless you. Amen, we're not really a choir. We're not really a choir. But we thought it would be robbery if we did not pay respect to our elder. Amen. 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 He and I and a few of these elders that are here tonight, today rather, we sang in the, in the Revelation Men's Choir many, many years ago. Amen. And there were some songs, I, I, I hesitate to say, amen. One song was Elder Watkins' favorite because he loved them all. <laughs> he loved them all. But we're going to try to do something that, a song that he loves so well. As we're singing, I want you to just kind of let your mind wander. I want you to see him with his tambourine. Moving. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, 
some mistakes or whatever, that's a, lay it out to our charge, praise God, not to our hearts, but just to our memories, because we're not too far behind the other That's right. And a lot of us in here probably got no history of him and whatever, and what he stood for, praise God, up until the time of his demise, praise God, he was the same. Many of you in here, you probably know that he was the type of person that go all the way out. And he never met no stranger. Well, Praise God. And he was considered my brother in a lot of areas. In Queenbridge, they know him as my brother. Uh -huh. If I go there now, they ask me, how your brother doing? Mm -hmm. Praise God. But nevertheless, we know that the Lord don't never make any mistakes. Amen. But nevertheless, we're going to move along. And we're going to have a, a believe reflection. Yeah. Praise God. At this time, praise God. Yes, from our minister Capers. Yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. 
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in Him. Not in it. It is in Him who made the day. Amen. 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 Giving honor to God, to Bishop Goins, and all the uh, clergy assembled, to my brothers and sisters, and to my family. I'm going to try to keep it, keep my cool on yeah. Sally. Yeah. On a lighter note, amen. I found this picture, and you won't be able to see it from where you are, but I call it the shark car, car, um, the uh, car shark. It's a picture with Timmy, Uncle Sam, Janice, my mother who passed away, and Grandpa King who passed away, and this little big head kid right there, right near Janice, is me. We were playing cards, and Uncle Sam took the, one of the cards that's in his sock. And we're all pointing to the sock because he was cheating. This is what I remember most about my Uncle Sam. See, I knew him when um, it was BS, before salvation. Uh, when he had a thousand keys on his um, uh, pants and he would dance and just shake and me and Lisa would um, just uh, imitate him all the time. He was that type of person. He was a lot of fun. And then I came across another picture with Uncle Sam, Aunt Sally, and Janice. Here Janice has her homemade dress that Grandma King made for her and Lisa. I know she's gonna get upset with me. But these are the kind, this is what, we had so much fun as kids. 198 Bond Street, I, we stayed there as kids. My sister and myself and I'm just grateful. And then this is another picture of my dad with Uncle Sam and my cousin Vincent when we lived on Rockaway Parkway. And I'm just so grateful to God for him putting Uncle Sam in my life because he was the first person to introduce me to church as a kid. And I, I, I didn't stay in the church because God knew that he had to keep me out for a while because he knew I would run away from it. So when he finally called me to ministry, Uncle Sam was one of the first people I called to tell him to come to my trial sermon. And he came. And I'm so grateful that I had between him and Uncle X, we call him Uncle X, but Elder um, um, Jordan, they um, exemplified what it meant to be men of God. Men of God. So my prayer today, because all of us in here, we have a, 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 a date stamp on our head with a time that is, it's running out, and we're all going to have to leave this world, but Please don't leave this world not knowing who Jesus Christ is. Right. Amen. 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 So there are two songs. I'm not going to sing because I don't sing, but the words of the song are so important. And for those of you who are old enough to remember, you know, because I was born in the 50s, so I know most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. But Tony Orlando and Dawn sang a song, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree. Well, the beginning of the song says, I'm going home. I've done my time. He went home, he did his time. But I'm gonna leave you with one last song, and this comes from the movie Mahogany with Diana Ross. And she asked the question, do you know where you're going to? So let me ask you this question as I take my seat. If you leave this place today, and God takes your life, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Because time is winding up, people, I'm telling you. God is not playing anymore. If y'all didn't know it, you can tell from this pandemic, he shut everything down. And when I shared with um, Uncle Sam and Elder uh, and Uncle X, I'm going to call him Uncle X, the prophetic word God gave me years ago to prepare the people because judgment is coming. And we think this vaccine, this is nothing. Be prepared for what's getting ready to really happen. And God is getting ready to expose some stuff, even when it comes to this vaccine. So. Just accept Jesus Christ. Amen. Do your assignment. Do what he sent you on this earth to do. And be blessed. God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. I'm Evangelist Carolyn Clemens. I am the cousin, the first cousin of Dr. Sam. And uh, I don't want to go into all that he meant to me. Everything that everybody said, plus because I don't want to, I want to continue with the program and the work. But I uh, would like to read this to you. Uh, Elder Sam was, as you all know, was very uh, interested, not just interested, but compelled to 
be in the Word all the time and to study to show himself approved. And he did come to the Greater Allen Cathedral, which is my home church, uh, because he, I told him about our classes, and he was uh, just eager to come and to learn everything that he could. And so he did pass through there. And when he passed, I let the uh, elders in my church know, and this is what they're sending to, to uh, all of us. To Sister Evangelist Carolyn Clemens, and uh, I don't know. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. And the family of the late Elder Samuel Watkins, it is with profound sorrow that we greet you on the loss of your beloved cousin and our servant of God, Elder Samuel Watkins. Our prayers go out to you, your family. The treasures that you knew and your beloved cousin are always with us, even in times like these. However, our best knowledge of life and life eternal is to know that this is a temporary separation. We in the body of Christ believe that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. This is our hope for being able to celebrate the life of our loved ones. We cherish the precious memories of knowing that all who die in Christ will live in Christ. We are practitioners of faith, and therefore moments like these are not trying, but are pauses along a journey to completeness in Christ. We celebrate the love and the joy of knowing that the Lord is closest to you when he visits a family in sorrow. Our love for Christ is ever more meaningful when joy takes the place of sorrow and peace and comfort dry our tears. It is with our heartfelt love that we bring these expressions and resolutions upon this occasion. It is our hope that in some small way we, we could share your sorrow. However, on behalf of sisters, be it resolved that we humbly submit our will to the will of Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being, in the resurrection life of Christ. Reverend Dr. Henrietta Scott Fullard, presiding elder, retired, WMS, Women's Mission Society, advisor. Thank you. Amen. We're going to leave that along at this moment. We're going to call uh, the uh, Auxiliary Committee of the Revelation that you may come forth at this time. Praise the Lord. The auxiliaries that did not um, offer their respects last night, and then we're going to ask that you would come at this time. We're going to call on the prayer warriors of the Revelation, and we're going to be calling on the Sunday School Department. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen, amen. On behalf of the IPW uh, prayer warriors, intercessory prayer warriors, I would like to read these remarks to, our, to the family members and to the church congregation. Our elder Samuel Watkins, what can the prayer warriors say about him? He was a warm, kind-hearted, loving, and giving man of God. He loved to pray and enjoyed being in all types of prayer services. Whether it was a prayer breakfast, prayer platform, or all-night prayer, yes, you could find our elder Sam Samuel there. He started the noonday prayer at the Revelation. Sometimes it was just Jesus and Elder Samuel. He made sure the doors were open for anyone desiring to come and pray at 12 noon. If he could not be there um, for any personal reasons or emergency, he would appoint someone to be available to open the doors of the church to let others in to pray. His heart's desire was that someone would be saved. It was through noonday prayer that many came to know and join the Revelation Church. Our elder Samuel loved the Lord with all his heart and anyone that knew him knew how much he loved God, mind, body, and soul. He loved to sing, and play his tambourine. He also loved to eat. We all have that in common. As we often eat what is not good for us, so did he. 
but Elder Sam would eat something that wasn't good for him, and then he would tell on himself. I had a pint of ice cream last night, he would say. And I know I shouldn't have eaten it so much, but I'll try next time to compose myself. I say that every night. <laughs> As I crunch at one and two in the morning. We would, he would just shake his head. We would just shake our head and say, oh, Elder Samuel, there is nothing he wouldn't do for you, no matter what time of day or night. If you needed Elder Samuel Watkins, he would come. If you needed someone to take you somewhere, even if you didn't ask him, but if he found out, he would volunteer. Amen. Your problem was solved. Amen. Elder Watkins, to the rescue. Whatever he did, he did it heartily unto the Lord. Amen. Elder Samuel Watkins, a humble, dedicated servant of God. He was not ashamed to tell someone how God delivered him and where God brought him from. That was his testimony. He gave God the praise, the glory, and the honor. He let others know how good God was to him and that he could do for them what God did for him. Elder Samuel Watkins, he had a sweet spirit, perseverance, and he was the example of faithfulness. He fought a good fight. He finished his course. The intercessory prayer warriors believe Elder Samuel Watkins shall receive a just reward. He will definitely be missed with an abundance of love. As the songs say, may the work I've done speak for me. And truly it has. We extend our heartfelt sympathy, love, and prayers to the family. On behalf of the president of the Intercessory Prayer Warriors, our minister, Clara Goins, our vice president, minister, Arlene Bascom, all members of the Intercessory Prayer Warriors, and of course, our Bishop Phil Philemon Goins, senior pastor of the Revelation Church. Elder Samuel Watkins will be sorely missed. We love him deeply, as the family did. He was truly, truly, an example. He worked in the vineyard and he did his job. May God continue to bless you all and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessings and praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Giving honor to everyone that's here, to our to ministry, to the saints, to our family of our Elder Samuel Watkins, friends, loved ones, everyone that's here. I'm here on behalf to speak for the Sunday School Department um, in order to give honor and to celebrate the life of our Elder Samuel Watkins. Uh, Elder Watkins served as superintendent of the Sunday School at the Revelation Church for 20 plus years. Wow. He was dedicated and he was committed to this learning avenue of the church. I finally remember the song that he would open up our Sunday School with on Sunday mornings. It was called Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, Ye Soldiers of the Cross. And we would sing that every time we opened up the Sunday school. After that, he would pray for God's blessings over the classes, our teachers, our students. And he would also pray for the service that we were having that day. He encouraged both young and old to apply themselves to learning the word of God, learning and encouraging people to attend Sunday school and not only learning the Word of God, but he would also encourage um, us to teach and learn to be able to be teachers. Even those of us that may not have had the confidence, he would encourage that you can also learn to be a teacher of the Sunday School. The Sunday School would like to extend our heartfelt condolences and our expressions of sympathy to the relatives, friends, family, all those that knew and loved our Elder Samuel Watkins, because we also loved him. He was the epitome of a faithful and a loving servant of God. He will be greatly, greatly missed. May the memories of the times that you shared together with him, may that bring you comfort, along with knowing that Jesus Christ is the God of all comfort, and he will continue to keep you during this time. 
and these words are coming submitted by Evangelist Temple Almond and the Sunday School Department of the Revelation Church of the Lord Jesus Christ and Redemption Apostolic Ministries will be continuing to pray for you in the days and the months and the weeks ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to turn this part of the service into the hands of our moderator, uh, Reverend Michelle Taylor. Praise God. As she come forth. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are going to keep this so short, so sweet, so simple, because we have much to do. Um, there are a few family members that we're calling on to represent the vastness of the family. We're going to call Cousin uh, Marcus, Cousin Marcus, and also Cousin Nicole, if, if the two of you will come up and then just follow each other. Um, if there is any other family member that wanted to give a 30 second reflection, 30 second, right? Cousin Sean. All right. So that's three, and that will be all. And we thank you so much, and we love you dearly. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Nicole. I am Uncle Sam. Is, he's my uncle. <laughs> he was my uh, my grandmother's um, brother. So on behalf of the Courier Watkins and Llewellyn Family Reunion, we are here to, of course, express our sympathy as well. Along with my grandmother, Uncle Sam, they spearheaded the family reunion all the way back to 1988. So that's how long he's been coming down to Clarksville. So I know many of you know he probably traveled a lot um, every two years we would have the family reunion so again we just wanted to make sure that we were here we loved him um, and we're going to miss him at the family reunions he was known for being the auctioneer he took that job so serious we had an auction every year uh, where the family would bring things in and we would use that money to donate scholarships to all of the kids um, for the next year so he took that job seriously um, it was nothing when it was family reunion time to wait for him to come down from New York just to say, hey, is Uncle Sam here yet? Uncle Sam here yet? Uncle Sam here yet? So we will greatly, greatly miss him. Um, so we just wanted to say that. And um, again, we love him. We love you all as well. And take care. Amen. Elder Sam was a lot of things to many people. In addition to being uh, my uncle, he was also my godfather. He was a godfather in the sense of the, uh, every sense of the word. You know, a lot of times people think that it's about giving material things, but he gave something that was more precious than that. He gave his time. Uh, every situation he had a scripture for. And uh, yesterday we heard a lot of stories about his miraculous driving. I think that he has a special talent. He probably could have won a NASCAR with his eyes closed. He always went to sleep. Probably got a joke with him. Hey, how's that narcolepsy coming? You know? When I played football in high school, there was two people that no matter when I looked up who would be there, Amen. it would be him and my father, side by side. Wow. Uncle Sam was really short, but he loved basketball. <laughs> He's the only dude that I would ever, you would ever see outside on the court with a suit on. And, I didn't get <laughs> and because he was so short, he'd get up under everybody and do his famous crossover. <laughs> so in closing, I'm gonna say thank you to Aunt Sally for sharing him with us. Because I know with many nights when he left to give somebody a ride. He heard about somebody needing something, and he got up and prayed with them. When I had health issues, he was one of the first pe people that I saw when I opened my eyes. So, I'm forever grateful for that. Amen. And to in, in closing, I'm going to use his favorite song, Pray My Strength in the Lord. Yeah. Blessings, family and friends. Give an honor to God, to Bishop, to each and every one of the pastors, reverends, whoever you may be. That about us. Um, I'm Sean Watkins. I'm a Watkins, of course, nephew of Uncle Sam, or Elder Sammy Watkins. So funny because I haven't called him Uncle Sam in so many years. Um, I said I was going to be 30 seconds, so I'm already 15 seconds short. Anyway, I just wanted to say that, you know, everybody's, you know, making um, things to have you laugh, and I don't have that. I'm really not that funny, but 
Now, although Watkins was really my confidant, you know, somebody that I could go to during times when, you know, you didn't want to express yourself to just anybody. And I think that that's important. He was um, my driver because when I came to this church, I came here owing child support $25,000. Um, so I didn't have a license, I had a suspended license. But I was self-employed, I was doing home improvement in people's homes and I didn't even have a way of getting to their homes. And he was my driver. Wow. He said, well, don't worry about that, just take the jobs. I said, well, I don't have a way of getting there, I can't even get the material, don't worry about it. He was my banker. <laughs> I owed child support, I couldn't receive checks because I had no way to cash them. We double endorsed the checks. He put them in his account. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. Yeah. And these weren't little checks. So he really took a chance because we didn't know whether or not the people actually had money in their accounts. Mm -hmm. But he did that. He was my road buddy. Mm -hmm. For years, we were all over the place. <clears throat> and, you know, a lot of people said that, you know, wow, you know, I know Elder Jordan walked into your father, but you, you really remind me of Elder <laughs> Sandy <Martin. laughs> with the get up and the gold and all that, you know. And last but not least, he was my prayer partner. He taught me how to pray. I, mean, I went with him everywhere, praying for all kinds of people all over the place and talking about falling asleep. I would fall asleep, wake up, he's still praying. I'm like, <laughs> 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 okay, all right? But I mean, I'm just so grateful that I had this privilege and opportunity to be able to be with him to gain all of this knowledge and experience, the wisdom, you know, and as has been said so many times. All of the information, because he was our family historian. Somebody said last night he was the glue that held us together. And it's really important, but um, just wanted to say that, you know, we're surely going to miss him. I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to, like I said, learn about the prayer. I also became a prayer warrior due to the things that I learned. And being a part of the noonday prayer, which we're going to continue. So just continue to keep me in your prayers. I know she said three, but I had to, I'd be remiss if there was something on my heart. Elder Sam, all of the things that you heard said about him, I echo them. I know, you know, uh, since he's been with me, I'm his second nephew. My cousin Butch was his first. Uh, but what I wanted to say was that Elder Sam was a reflection of his father, Jordan Watkins Jr., a senior and his mother, Carrie Whitaker Watkins. He was his father's son because his father would, when you said let's, his father would say go. And that's how Elder Sam was. He was a reflection of his mother in so many ways, Carrie, well, I can't even think of some examples, but I, what I do remember is her st sitting right over there one day saying how she was so blessed that her sons, her daughters, and she named all of them, that they were all saved, and they were ministers of the, of the Lord. And, and so, Elder Franklin, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> Elder Sam was my uncle. I loved him dearly. He was also a Watkins, a Whitaker, <coughs> And we just uh, reflect, I'm just reflecting on how much God blessed all of us to be a part of this family. Because if we weren't, we wouldn't all be here where we are now. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. In the words of my grandfather, praise the Lord. My name is Donnell, Donnell Watkins. I didn't come up here with a pre rehearsed script or pre rehearsed ceremony. My grandfather was the greatest man I ever knew. He was the greatest man I ever lived. A lot of y'all know him in church. I know him on a more intimate level. I know him on a real personal level. Whenever he, no matter who, no matter what happened, no matter what went on, my grandfather always had the back of the church. And no matter what he was carrying, no matter what burdens he had on his back, he still made time for his family. The last time I was in this church, I buried my mother. And now I'm here, now I'm here this very day burying her father. You know what I mean? So death is very, death is very, very relevant in my life and it and it hold no burden because he gave me strength. He was the oldest dude that I know and no matter how old he was, he kept it moving. So when I see people younger than me, they talk about they lazy, they tired, or I can't do this, I can't do that, I don't got an air for it. My grandpa was 80-something, he always found time to find time to do time to do something. 
You know what I mean? Like I said again, my 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 my, my words are not pre-rehearsed, but I couldn't let the ceremony go past without saying something. And speaking for my grandfather, he be rolling over in his grave. He ain't get there yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like no matter what I did, no matter how much time I spent in prison, my grandfather traveled. But I ain't had nobody to call. My grandfather picked up that phone. And when nobody would pick up, my grandfather he wrote us no matter what it was. Yeah. But I ain't got to explain that to y'all because if you in this church, you already know. Yeah. His troubles was everybody's troubles. Yeah. His pain was everybody's pain the same way that y'all was for us. And I thank y'all for holding him down, for holding us down. And I just thank y'all for being here. And it's greatly appreciated. So on behalf of my family, my grandfather, my brothers, I just want to say thank you, y'all. I appreciate you. Family also. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to I, I personally come here. I'm Anthony T. Jones. I'm the district leader of the community. I also run the, the Community First Democratic Club. Tracy, my president, was here yesterday. Yeah. I want to thank you so, so much for sharing him with us. This man has been probably with every single elected official in Brownsville in the last 40 to 50 years. He served with them. And I just want to personally thank you for sharing him with our club. He was always on time. He opened up prayer. One thing about our club, we don't open up until we have prayer. He opened for us in prayer. He closed for us in prayer. And I want to thank you so much for sharing him with us. Again, family, we love you. Thank you. We thank God for putting him on earth and being our senior and our elders to guide the young people that's involved in politics in this community. And he will surely be missed. But I came today personally to thank God and to thank you for sharing him with Brownsville. Thank you. He was a very well-known person. And a lot of people that knew him, that he knew, not even here today. A lot of the gospel groups that he used to be affiliated with, a lot of them are not here today. But nevertheless, we thank God for those of you that are here. And we thank God for the reflection that came forth from the various ones. And as we were saying that one thing about the uh, other Sam, he loved his family. He loved people. He just loved people in general. Praise God, and we're going to miss him dearly. Praise God. I believe we were scheduled to go to Clarksville well, last year when the epidemic hit. Praise God. And that was all he was talking about. <coughs> My brother, you going to Clarksville, ain't you? I said, yeah, I'll meet you down there. You know? <laughs> Praise God. That was our son. We're going we gonna to miss him because when we will call him, everything he would say, well, how you doing, brother? I would say, I'm doing all right, Ellis Sam. How you doing? I'm doing all right, doing all right. Now, when you coming now? And we were supposed to be going to our favorite spot on Pickin Avenue. Uh, where we would eat. <laughs> Him and I, once we retired, we would ride around with our basketball in our car. <laughs> where we would stop over there and got the court. Shoot a few hoops. I don't remember if none of us made any of people shoot hoops in the room. And after we finish shooting hoops, we'll go to the restaurant. And we will eat. And then after we finish eating, then we will depart and go to our several destinations. Last time I had talked to him, I told him, well, when I come back to New York, we're going to go to our favorite spot. He said, well, I, don't, I don't know if it's still open or not, but we'll find one. <laughs> that was our brother's family. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. And now we are going to call on our 
Minister Carr going to come and read the cards and the resolutions. Let's welcome her. Amen. 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 Blessings to all to the family on today. We give honor to God, first of all, and to our bishop, to all of those that are on the roster, to the family again, to the Revelation Church, we honor you. You have our prayers. We know that God will continue to take you through. And now we're going to read um, some cards. We can't read them all, but we just want to show our love. The different ones that have received them, and we thank you all. Our love and prayers are with you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. To the Watkins family. Thinking of you in this time of loss and asking God to tenderly care for your deepest needs with heartfelt sympathy. <coughs> Our prayers are with you, Annie and Ronald King. <clears throat> Forgive me if I may say your name. With sympathy, thoughts, and prayers are with you, Pearl, Jackson, Payne, and Ben. <coughs> Lord, you created us for a better place. We rejoice when our loved ones have made their way to you, to wholeness and perfect peace. While we mourn the loss of their departure from us, thank you that one day we will experience a joyful reunion forever in your presence. Amen. Amen. Joseph, him, I believe it is, Michelle, Dia. In the loss of your loved one, May the memories that mean the most to you live forever in your heart. Love, Cousin Michelle. Beyond the valley of sadness lies the comfort of grace to the Watkins family, sending prayers and love at this difficult time. Anointed with Purpose Church, Pastor Shirley Cord. Remembering with you when the heart is grieving, God comes near to bring his comfort and to catch every tear. Our thoughts and prayers are with you continually. We are here for you in your time of need. Love, Pastor Hart, and the Redemption Apostle Ministries family. Remembering with you, may God hold you close, comfort you gently, and carry you through. In prayer and sympathy, the Revelation Bishop, the Revelation family, Bishop Pico and Senior Pastor. Amen. The resolution. The church resolution of respect for Elder Samuel Watkins. After the clouds, the sunshine. After the winter, the spring. After the shower, the rainbow. For life is a changeable thing. After the night, the morning, bidding all darkness cease. After life's cares and sorrows, the comfort and sweetness of peace. Helen Steiner Rice. We, the members of the Revelation Church of Jesus Christ, of the Apostolic Faith Incorporated, want the family to know that our hearts and prayers are with you as we gather to bid a Christian farewell to a faithful servant whom we all love so well, Elder Samuel Watkins. Whereas Elder Watkins professed and preached a hope in Christ, was baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus and lived a Holy Ghost filled life as an active and diligent supporter and leader through over 50 years of service to the church. Whereas Elder Watkins was a reverent, eager, and cheerfully willing worker who loved the Lord deeply, an extremely reliable person who would perform many tasks traveling near or far so as to benefit and encourage someone in their everyday life and the cause of Christ and inspired others to follow this example. Whereas not only is this a loss of a devoted elder, but also a person who was always there, caring and loving, deeply with encouragement, 
correction, and admonition if need be. Whereas the passing of our beloved elder is the will of God and there is a human tie that has been broken which binds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus, who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace a natural family and spiritual family, because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Elder Watkins, but will attempt to demonstrate his love. Be it further resolved that a period of official mourning will be observed for a period of at least three months by the display of a banner of mourning on the exterior of the church to acknowledge the passing of our precious elder. His rostrum seat will also remain draped in memorial for this period. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. But we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But most importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. When it is all over, we would like you to remember, in case there's a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem, you would like us to hear. In case there's a favor that you would like us to do, we are here if you need us to help you to see you do. Humbly submitted on this 24th day of July, 2021, the officers and members of the Revelation, Brooklyn, New York, Bishop Coleman Goins, Senior Pastor. A copy of this church resolution is presented to the family and another copy will be recorded in the church archives. God bless you family. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. Because God will see you through. We love you. The revelation. At this time we are going to have, have our obituary reading from our Samuel T. Watkin Jr. Let's welcome him as he come forth. I want to thank everyone for being here today. And all of my father, Christian Bourne, all the clergy and pastors who are present as well, family and friends. Between yesterday and today, I heard a lot of different reflections. But as everyone knows, the oldest and first one usually knows that parent better than anyone else. A lot of reflections were heard. I'm just going to reflect on two. A lot of people talked about they saw my father play basketball. Up until later in age, he played. But two things he learned about me. The first time that he learned that I had basketball skills, he played and he guarded me. And he forgot I was left-handed. I cross dribbled, did a spin and turn. And he tried to stay with me and broke his ankle. Oh. He never challenged me again. He was always on my team. <laughs> the second thing is, a father is a man of few words. That's an understatement. Yeah. Anybody know why? Because you really couldn't know we all talk. And my father never was short on words. But the one thing he did speak about frequently was the Word of God. I learned it from the time I was born until the time he passed. The second thing most significant is that when my mother-in-law passed away, my father and I resided over that service. There was no musical selections. There was reflections from the family and friends. But he and I officiated that whole service together. That is the last profound memory that I have as a man to share with my father. Elder Sammy Watkins Sr. was born to the late Mother Carrie and Deacon Jones Watkins Sr. on September 28, 1936 at Mary Immaculate Hospital in Queens, New York. 
From this union were born six children, Thelma, Geneva, Jordan, Jr., Will, Walter, the Sam being the six and seven children, which includes his half-sister, Mabel Mullins. He followed the tradition of godly service established by the Watkins family from his parents to his siblings. Sam grew up on Fulton Street, Brooklyn, New York, and graduated from PS 93. It was there he realized his interest in singing, dramatics, and cultivated a love for classical music. Sam performed at various local R&B groups and was known as Little Health. Entering George Westerton High School, Westinghouse High School, he majored in electrical wiring and installation. I also did the same thing. Sam was recommended for the, to the musical director of the Glee Club and Dramatics class and was a member of the Teenage City Glee Club and Dramatics class, excuse me, Citywide High School Choir. He also sung in the choir at his high school graduation ceremony. In April 1955, Sam married Sally Ann Watkins, and the Lord blessed him with three children. Myself, Samuel Timothy, Janice Renee, and my late sister Serena Watkins, also known as Lisa. Sam also has another son, John Gilbert White. Sam joined the Zion Gospel Assembly Church in Jamaica, New York, under the late Bishop J.P. Shields, received the baptism in Jesus' name and the gift of the Holy Ghost in February 1958. He served faithfully on the baptismal committee and deacon board. He was the vice president and president of the young people, chairman of the program committee, and participated in many other clubs and auxiliaries, such as the Shields, Lytell, Gospel Singers, and Zion Messengers. Working with the Brotherhood, Sam headed various building and repair projects to beautify the church and homes of the saints. Elder Sam's ministry at the Zion Gospel Center Church as a member of the prayer band Junior Missionary Band, an all-night prayer band. He was a member of the Long Island Pentecostal Minister Alliance, includes New York under Bishop Shields, and a faithful Sunday school student. Elder Sam was a member of the International Believers Fellowship of the Apostolic Faith, founded by the late Elder Franklin of Apostolic Temple in Queens, New York. Elder Sam has traveled throughout the country with the fellowship expanding the Word of God. He was also a member of the Little Zion Church in Brooklyn under the guise of Bishop James Pickin and assistant pastor Jordan Watkins in the mid to late 1960s. Joining Revelation Church in May 1972, Elder Sam was baptized in Jesus' name. He was ordained by the late Bishop Philman Goins in 1973. He served faithfully under Bishop Goins, working in the field as, as a missionary and evangelist. After the demise of Bishop Goins, Elder Jordan Watkins became the pastor of Revelation Church, and Elder Sam continued to work with Pastor Watkins. Elder Sam works in a number of capacities, assistant pastor, Sunday school superintendent, pastor's aid committee member, trustee board member, ambassador of goodwill, and organizing revivals and church programs. Elder Sam also represented the Revelation Church among a group of ministers from Brooklyn at the first protest march in, in Washington. He represented Revelation wherever he traveled, which was usually on a mission of mercy for someone in need, visiting the sick, and those shut in. The incarcerated and the bereaved providing prayer, good company, material sustenance for 40 plus years of service at the Revelation. Elysian's theological training included Allen Amy Church, Bible Institute, St. Augustine Theological Institute, Church Administration Workshop, and One Accord Theological Institute. Elysian was a man of many skills and talents. He started working as a messenger while attending high school. He learned gardening and landscaping working at the school with his uncle's company, the James Whitaker Landscaping Company. Over the years, he worked as a shipping clerk, offset printing press operator, and galvanized plate maker. A watchman, special patrolman for the New York Housing Authority, railroad porter for the New York Transit Authority, mail handler and postal clerk. His last employment was as a truck driver for a dependable trucking company, formerly IMC carriers, for 30 years until his retirement in 2009. As I mentioned before, for many years, he used his own personal vehicles to transport those in need to have arrived to various destinations. He tirelessly ensured people had arrived to and from church services as well. Elder Sam was called home to be with the Lord on July 12, 2021. He was preceded in death by his daughter, Serena Lisa. 
and granddaughter Sharice Watkins. His parents, the late mother Carrie and Deacon Jordan Watkins Sr., sisters Delma Jackson, Geneva Jones, Mabel Mullins, brothers Pastor Jordan Watkins Jr., Elder Walter Watkins, and brother William Watkins. Elder Sam needs to cherish in his memory his loving wife of 66 years, wow. Sally Watkins, sisters in law, Rosalie Watkins, Virginia Watkins, son Sam and Timothy, and John Gilbert White, daughter Janice Owens, grandchildren Patricia Gaines, Dr. Dawn Watkins, Dwayne Watkins, Ivy Terry, Andre C. Watkins, Shanita Owens, Quincy Owens, Tyrone Watkins, Darnell Watkins, Rasson Watkins. We also need 17 great-grandchildren and two great-great-grandchildren, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, extended family members, and his church family. I hold up to so. I wrote a poem in memory of my father. It's called Tell Him. Should I leave here before you do? Please tell him I've really enjoyed my stay. Tell him that I've loved and savored the beauty of a sunrise and squandered in the magnificent sunsets over the seashores. And as the winds blew, whispers from his eminence spoke to me with each cascading wave to the shore. Tell him how I fell in love with the majestic mountains that rain stretched across the north and south, as well as to the east and west across the country. Let them know that I reveled in the splendor of grassy meadows and riveting rivers. Let them know that I was exhilarated every time I viewed the heavens from an airplane or watched them wonder the gracefulness of a plane taking off and landing. Please tell them how much I've appreciated and loved my family, friends, loved ones, and mere acquaintances that have touched my life. I've also enjoyed giving love and being loved. And if someone asks, what would be the one thing I've had regrets about, would change or do again, tell them I've had no regrets, and I would only change the things that I've done if I wrote this paper. Blessed name of Christ. We honor the Lord today. 
Not just by what we're saying, but by what we are doing. We honor God. Amen. You, I know, have it in your mind that we are honoring this great man. But he is a man of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so, we bring to mind, amen, so many wonderful things. As we do honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to the pastors, ministry, amen, uh, of the revelation and of the family. And all of you that even are sitting there in the congregation, amen, so patient. But we thank God for you. We want to thank God for your prayers. Because through your prayers, you are, you're sustaining us. We... Amen. At different points in time, amen, we seem like we might not need it so much. Amen. But there are those other hours. Amen. To the family. We love you. We are praying with and through you. We are concerned about your continued well-being. And we genuinely, amen, want to be there for you. We will, and we are here for you. Amen. To Sally, we thank God for you. Praise God. And the strength that you have exhibited. Amen, in this time. I'm not calling no names, but to, to Tim and to Janice, we thank God for not just what you're doing post-mortem, but what you did. Amen. To provide comfort for him in his waiting days. And it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago that Elder Watkins finally admitted that he was getting old. <laughs> He would stand behind the sacred place and he would jump up and down and say, I'm still young, I'm still young. And he'd take off and run down the aisle. And one time he did it, he came back holding his back. <laughs> he had to kind of revise his assessment of the situation. I don't know if you know what it's like to have somebody upon whom you depend every day. I have a wife, I have a wife, my companion. I love her, I depend on her. I thank God. But just as an aside, today is our 45th wedding anniversary. But I want to show you how God works because those of you that know us, we go away on a trip every year for our anniversary. God told me not this year. Back about a month and a half ago when I was starting to make plans and do, he said, hold on. He said, wait. And I have come to get a good spiritual sense, enough sense to listen to when God is talking. But he has Amen. I told the funeral director when we were there making arrangements, and I meant it sincerely, he was my right hand. As I said, my, my wife is my companion of these 45 years, but I 
hesitated to show her my phone. You know how you have favorites in your phone? <laughs> you got certain people, you got them in a certain order. Hallelujah. I hesitated to let her see that Elder Watkins was a little bit above her in the open <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to change it before she gets the chances. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But that's the relationship we have. I love it. And I would often time wonder why would a man of such great spiritual acumen, ability, learning, place himself under my authority? Y'all don't hear this. When I came to realize it wasn't about me. All he cared about was the Jesus in me. The Jesus in you. He wanted to see Jesus in everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And if he saw that, yes, he'd go to the greatest lengths yes. to be of assistance. If he didn't see that, he'd go to the greatest <laughs> lengths until he was starting to see it. Amen. <laughs> We're going to turn to the scripture. We're going to be brief. But I I tried for years. Years. Amen. The Lord brought me back to the revelation toward the end of the previous millennia. And Elder Jordan Watkins allowed me to take over the reins in 2002. And I have tried here at the Revelation for years to get the saints of the Revelation to call him Elder Watkins. And I just had to give up because he's Elder Sam. And why, why didn't it didn't really take root is because he didn't have my back. <laughs> In one area, he didn't have my back. He remained humble and I believe he, he took great pleasure in being able to be known on such a personal level. The Word of God right for every occasion. Psalm number 116 verse number 12 and on death. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. 
Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. In the house. Now, as I'm reading that passage of scripture, I'm not reading it, amen, from my perspective. I have, amen, our dearly departed elder in mind. Amen. Uh, when the psalmist asks the question, what shall I render? Yeah. We need to understand he already has the answer. Yeah. Amen. Because he goes on down to say, amen, I will pay my vows. Yeah. Hallelujah. There, amen, if, 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 if we are to look, amen, at uh, the gaining of life eternal and the moving, amen, into a place called heaven. Amen. We come to understand that it is not by works that we achieve it. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we need to understand that the reason why the the Holy Ghost came upon us, uh, amen, not, amen, because we did works, uh, but, but so that we might do works. I'm going to take, amen, about 10 minutes, and I want to talk about uh, an active anointing. <laughs> Somebody say, an active anointing. Hallelujah, not the kind of anointing that you, amen, can put on the side, amen, when it's, uh, when it's inconvenient, uh, but the kind of call uh, in your life, uh, amen, that you're ready to fulfill, amen, whatever time uh, of day or night, uh, whatever of the circumstance, uh, no matter whether you're up uh, or whether you're down, uh, an active anointing, uh, I'm not talking about somebody amen, that you might be familiar with, amen, who gave of his life, hallelujah, who made sacrifice, hallelujah, who did, amen, in season and out of season, who preached the gospel, who reproved and rebuked with all long suffering and doctrine. I'm talking about a man by the name of Sam. Y'all don't need me to tell you how great of an individual he was. Amen. But, amen, that's the eulogist just has to, amen, re rehearse some things. Amen. Leave, amen, you with, a, amen, some reminders and some impression. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, amen, uh, we all know him in various capacities. Amen. We know him, amen, as the one who used to, amen, sing, amen, in the group. We know him as the one, amen, who whatever instrument, amen, came his way. If it was a trumpet, I don't know if it was a trumpet, amen, he tried to blow it. If it was a tambourine, he tried to shake it. If it was a drum, he tried to beat it. Amen. If it was a what do you call that thing right there? What do you call it? Xylophone. Xylophone? That's xylophone? And yeah, y'all know why you're sitting there? Amen. Because we had to convince him, amen, to put it away. <laughs> If it was a washboard, if it was a symbol, amen, hallelujah, all in praise unto the Lord, hallelujah, but it wasn't just about what he did in the building, oh, come on here, sir. hallelujah, it's what he did in the streets of Brooklyn, and in Queens, hallelujah, and wherever the Holy Ghost sent him, hallelujah, what shall I render unto the Lord? His benefits. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We used to, amen, we, we would talk about how, amen, the Lord had blessed him. 
not just with three score and ten, amen, but with four score. Hallelujah. How, amen, he still had his faculties. Let me tell you what I love about serving God. God will grant you the desires of your heart. Came a time down toward the end. I'm trying to rush and fit this all in. Amen. Hallelujah. Came a time down toward the end. Amen. When 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 the elder was hospitalized and they gave him some kind of medicine. Amen. And it messed with his mind. And it messed with his memory. Hallelujah. And you know he was good for remembering stuff. Hallelujah. And telling you this one did that. Amen. On this day and that occasion. Amen. But his memory was gone. Hallelujah. And that was the thing that he shared with us. Amen. Bothered him the most. Yes. 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 Couldn't remember those things that he was used to rehearsing. But what I love about serving God, he will not leave you. Amen. Nor forsake you. Hallelujah. And we pray. And he prayed because he didn't forget how to pray. And the Lord, oh help me, Holy Ghost. The Lord brought it all back to him where he could function again, where he could do it again. Now listen, we still had to remind him on Zoom that he had the camera on. <laughs> He sat down at the Zoom service one time, and man, he, was, he didn't realize the camera was on, and he's cutting his food and, and eating a meal, and man, we tried to have service, uh, somebody had to call, Ella, you got the camera on! But God brought it all back. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. This is what happens when you drink the cup of salvation. This is what happens when you pay your vows. This is what happens when you do God's will and you do God's work. Oh, listen here. It's not enough that we speak well of him. Hallelujah. We got to start doing well. Oh, thank you, Lord. I saw some folks yesterday, amen, come to the viewing that I hadn't seen in a long time. And you know, it's, uh, amen, I felt, amen, like um, I had to fill his role. Tell them about how long they've been missing. Tell them that it was time to come back. Tell them that they need Jesus. Tell them that God is waiting. Let them know that there's a God that is a Savior. as to the juxtaposition of these two verses. Amen. Why it talks about paying your vows. Amen. In the presence of the people. And then right following that it says precious in the sight of the Lord. When you do God's will. Hallelujah. When you fulfill your life's passion. Listen, it's not my life passion to jump in the car and go running around Brooklyn picking people up and bringing them to church. I used to warn him all the time. You let all the old big people sitting up in your car ruining your shocks. <laughs> but he said, I have it, you know, that's all right. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, when your car go down, you look, go ask them for some money. <laughs> but I couldn't complain but so much. Amen. He was the official driver for the Eternal Revenue Service. <laughs> Y'all might know, I mean, my dearly departed sister, Evangelist Barbara Goins. That's yeah. her seat right there. You see, yeah. draped in the blue. Amen. The Lord called her home last December. 
Hallelujah. But, amen, for years and years and years, he drove her to whatever speaking engagement she had to go. I worked for Social Security. He drove her out to the Social Security building. Hallelujah. And he, amen, was a good driver. <laughs> He was a good driver because he got you there. He got you there. So the IRS had him to thank. He was faithful on the door when we would do taxes. He was one of the people that would meet you at the door. Amen. We hear about his exploits, amen, politically. Amen. It was so wonderful to hear from the precious daughter on yesterday, amen, and his brother on today, amen, because he was a multifaceted, amen, uh, uh, dynamo. Can I say dynamo? Somebody say dynamo! An active anointing. That's what he had. Take the first letter, A. 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 What's that? Triple A. Anybody know about Triple A? You need them. You call them. Come on. They get there. An active anointing. See that, please, in this man's life. See the years of service that he put in. I don't have to belabor the point, but I will tell you, amen, there is much to be said that he served under my father. He served under his father. And then he served under me. But now he's serving somewhere else. Allow the throne of God. I used to tease him. And I see all of the brothers here today look wonderful. With our white shirts and our red ties. Y'all couldn't have made a better choice. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderfully done. But I used to tease him when he would come that way. And I would tease him about, so y'all remember assembly? Back in the day in the public schools, uh, yeah, man, we used to have assembly. And you had to wear a white shirt and what? And a red tie. Amen. When I used to tease him about when, amen, he was wearing uh, that white shirt and red tie about him going to assembly. <laughs> But how many folks know, amen, the Bible speaks about that assembly? When we all shall gather. Hallelujah. The assembly of the firstborn of God. He's there now. I don't know how God fixes it. That, that we here waiting, and he's departed, and he's already there, but we are going to meet him there simultaneously. I don't know how that works. But I do know, amen, that time ceases to be once we move from this realm into the next. I'm done. And a, an active anointing rested on this man of God. To the family, to Sally, to Janice, to Tim, to, to the, all of the, the grandchildren, nephews, nieces, Cousins, great grands, great great. Seek an active anointing in your life. Come on. Seek an active anointing. Hallelujah. And you might want, you might try to replicate what he did. I don't think you're going to achieve it. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But be all that God wants you to be. Let me give you an amen. Can you give me a hand? Thank you so much.
Amen. For granting me this space of time and this honor. Hallelujah. Indeed, I'm privileged. Privileged to, to know him. Amen. To serve with him. And you know, the people of God, we don't worry about whether we're going to make it or not. But to be honest with you, sometimes we worry about how we're going to make it. Y'all hear the difference? Amen. We know we serve a mighty and a powerful God. And he is going to bring us through. But we don't always know how it's going to work. Let me speak to my Revelation family because we don't know how it's going to work with the elder going. We haven't had service back in here on a regular because of the pandemic. We don't know how it's going to work with Evangelist Barbara gone, with Mother Ruby gone, with Sister Teresa gone. We don't know how all of that's going to come together. And you might be saying, well, why, why, why is God picking on us? Guess what? I'm kind of taking another perspective on it. I'm looking at it from the perspective, amen, that, amen, God is calling the prepared. We are a soul-saving station. And because we have made that our priority, God got no problem plucking one over here, plucking one over there, calling them home, preserving them, keeping them, and helping us to carry on. I know, amen, we have a special calling revelation. We're going to fulfill that, amen, because these great men and women of God who have gone on before us, amen, we will by no means allow their legacy, amen, to suffer loss. Amen. I'm wondering if there's anybody in the revelation that remembers a, 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 a sister by the name of Betty Lucky. That, that name rings with me because she joined the church one Sunday in June, the first Sunday in June, she came, she got prayer, she accepted the Lord, joined the church, we dismissed, went home, I got a call, two hours later, she passed away. Amen. It's not too late till it's too late. So if there is anybody who wants to make a commitment or recommitment to Christ, we're going to ask you to make your way back to a Bible-believing church. Don't, don't let it go, you know, yeah, it was nice, oh yeah, I felt something. About no. There's enough ministers in the family and around, amen, you could talk to somebody and they will point you. I'm not going to do it right now today, amen, because the time does not allow. But don't let the opportunity to have an active anointing in your life, don't let it slip away. Give God praise and thanks one more time. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is always worthy of praise. Just want to first give honor to God, to the all of clergy, to this family, and to everyone that's under the sound of my voice. We just want to say on behalf of the Ellis Woodbridge Funeral Home, we again just want to take the time to express our condolences to this family. But we know that we do not sorrow as others do. But we know that this great man of God is going to be all right. He's okay because to be absent from the body is to be. So if you know who he knows, it's not goodbye, but it's till we meet up again. That great getting up on him. Amen. Um, we just want to, on behalf of the family again, just thank everyone for your love and support that was shown to the family at that time of bereavement. Immediately following this service, we're headed to the Pine Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery, which is located in Farmingdale, New York. I am gonna ask you that you please greet the family at another time so we can give them ample time to get to the cemetery safely, amen? 
Okay, and what we're gonna do is give you an opportunity to have your parting view. Before you come up, I'm gonna ask that you be directed by the ushers. If not, we can assist you if there's no one to help. But um, be directed by the ushers as you come. We are lining up our cars after the dismissal, after the benediction. Please line up your cars. We're gonna make that right on Eastern Parkway because I see this is for Eastern Parkway is busy too. This is a busy street, so I didn't want nobody getting hurt. So we we are making that right turn on Eastern Parkway. We do not have this funeral stickers. Please put on your bright lights and your hazards, and we'll safely watch everyone and drive safely. Thank you. Amen. Into the hands of the usher. Oh, 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 oh. We're going to ask those who are assembled in the back, if you want to have the view, we ask you to come now. We're also going to ask everyone on my right, your left, to please stand so that you may come for the view. Ushers, please take charge and lead them from the, from the back.